Well, I gotta work on squaring this header up to the building. Now, I've got everything squared from a dimensional standpoint, 14 feet off the building, but I wanna make sure when I come back into my ledger board up there, I'm squaring this in. So I left my ledger just a little bit long. But I was trying to think on how it'd be the best way to square this up on the ends with it being that tall off the ground and me by myself, I got something in mind. So I'm up here on top of the header. So this is my 14 foot mark and I've plumbed this post and that post. And when you get back there and side them, there I've got them in pretty good shape. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my laser level and I'm gonna try to square this with that laser level. But what I'm gonna do is make me a sight mark down here on this end. And then that way I'll have something to square it off of when I get down there with that laser. All right, I've waited till almost dark so I can see my laser well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I will get my lasers cut on here. So I'm gonna line up with the edge of this header here and then line it up with my mark down there. I'm gonna go down there and check and see if I'm lined up on my mark, make sure it looks like I am. And then what I should have, being lined up here and then lined up down there on my mark, it should give me a 90 degree mark right over there on my ledger. So I can go up there and make a mark. And we should have this thing squared up to the garage. All right, I'll make me a mark right here. We'll know where to cut her off in the daylight. Well, that worked like a charm, but I got it squared off, so I'll know where to run my first rafter, so we'll see you on another day. try to do is get all my layout marks on the tops of my rafter so when I get up there I don't have to try to mark everything out walking on top of these like a tightrope walker so I'm gonna square the ends of them up and I'll make all my marks that way it'll make life easier on me all right shoot one for you two Boom, baby! Good nice. shot. Well, I'll tell you, this thing makes it a lot easier not having to climb up and down that ladder, especially when you're doing stuff like this. But I had, this LVL was on the bottom of the stack. So if you'll notice down through there, it was cupped so I'm sticking up proud here. So when I put my raptor seat in here, it'll be holding me up. So I've got a little plane, power plane that I'm gonna run down through there and knock the top of that off, get my seat back level. And then we'll be about ready to set some rafters. I've 
always carried a pocket knife and I've always carried those small three bladed case knives. They're just a good size. I always carry them in my pocket, but I've used them for screwdrivers, pry bars, you name it. And I always bend the blades in them. So I was looking for something that I could carry in my pocket that had a few more, I guess, features that I wouldn't bend the blades up. And anyway, I was a little more usable, but I have bought, it's a Leatherman Free T4. And it's got several different things, a uh, flat screwdriver, a little file, some scissors. It's got a uh, got one blade that locks in place. But anyway, this has been the handiest little knife, but a couple of these little things in here, I said, well, I'll never use that. Well, these little tweezers, I never thought I'd use those, but in cases where you get a big splinter in your finger like that, they come in pretty handy. So. If you want something carried in your pocket and it's just a little bit bigger than that case knife, fits in your pocket well, handy as a pocket on a shirt. Well, I got all my rafters put on last night. Just as getting dark when I got finished and I forgot to turn the video on. We got all my rafters on. I'm trying to get an early start this morning because it's calling for rain all day. So I'm getting here cutting my blocking now. I'll bridge it down the center to try to stiffen that up. Then we'll build her overhangs, put her fascia on, try to get it wrapped up before we get soaked too bad. Now these three that I just saw would be my fascia board. And so what I did is took tapes on, I just cut that angle to match the slope of my roof. So my rafter tail come down and then my Roof line will continue all the way through the edge. Well, it's going to be just an absolute glorious day today. I got a feeling I'm going to get wet. Well, it's turned out to be a lovely day, but I'm working on fixing my overhangs here. And so I'm going to notch out the first two and then I'll run one out here the length of my overhang I want. I'll notch it down into these first two joists and then I'll tie it into that third one. That way it'll come out here and embrace me coming on my overhang and then I'll come back here and block it. But I gotta notch these two out and then I'll do two more down here. That way it'll give me some support. Facial catch it on the end. I'll have one here, one here, and then I'll block it up here against the house. So it's got some notches. I already got the other two down there on the other end done. Get these put in here and then we'll be ready to put a fascia board on the outside. same day but travis had to make a wardrobe change i was cold and wet down to the bone so anyway i it has quit raining here for a little while so i'm gonna try to get this fascia board nailed on get these ends trimmed up then we'll be ready to put a cross bracing on the top i'm not going to put a standing seam roof like i did on the house i'm just going to do rib metal on this since it's just a shed so i'll run my two fours long ways but Get this face on, we'll be ready to go up there and strip it. All right, facial board's on. Let's go up here and try to strip the top. That got it off. Ooh. Clumsy. Huh? That yeah. fell off here. I about met my maker.
when old Travis about fell on his face, that would have probably ended the day, but. Well, the sun's rose again, I'll tell you, after climbing around on that roof yesterday evening and wrestling these overhangs and all that stuff, I've got stuff hurting on me that I ain't had hurt in a while. But I'm gonna try to finish stripping the top and then I'm gonna build a little end walls out here. Basically, I'll enclose this from uh, roughly there back to the house. That way so much wind won't blow rain back in there. So finish stripping it and we'll build a little end caps. We'll put some joist hangers on those rafters against the house and we better have it whooped. Now on this stuff, you notice it's a little darker tint. I had some people come out here one day and they stained this with motor oil and diesel fuel. That way it'll be exposed under the bottom. I just put that on, it's gonna be covered up the top, not gonna get any moisture on it, but anyway, it'll just maybe keep bugs from eating it. But when you're up here handling this stuff and that water on top of it, it gets a little slick. I don't know that I'd advise it. So when you gotta walk on it, it's like on an ice skate honey. Well, have you ever seen a big walrus rolling around on rafters? That's about what that looked like. But I'll tell you, my knees feel great right now. I'll tell you, if you don't do that every day, that'll work on places that you don't realize you got. So glad I got it stripped. I'm gonna go down here and work on finishing my little end caps. We're pretty well have this thing whooped outside of putting some brackets on where my rafters terminate. Hey, I'm glad to have that over with. Well, that ought to keep a little bit of rain from blowing in. And I think at the time I get siding on that, that'll dress it up a little bit. All right, second end is up. And I went ahead and built my bird box out here on the overhang. So this end should be ready to go. All right, maybe I'll keep it from blowing away. Is this thing I'm standing on? I will tell you, it's took me about three days total, three full days to get it done, which the first day when I set the headers and the posts, I didn't have it, but I went and rented it and I've used it for two days on it. It was rainy and messy yesterday, so it slowed me down a little bit, but I'd have killed myself if I didn't have it. So I'll give the MVP to this lift for sure. Now, when I was cutting those rafters, I didn't video any of it. I was trying to keep my mind in it so I didn't screw it up. But I cut one, I did my math, and I cut one, stuck it up there, it fit. And so then I just gang cut them all right here, and that way I could just take them up there and put them in. But I'll show you something here to be mindful of if you've never, you know, built a shed roof off coming off a building. It might save you a little bit of trouble. Now here was my math that I had to contend with. I wanted a 312 pitch on my roof. So basically we wanted for every foot of travel, I wanted three inches of fall. So that's the pitch that I wanted. I had a 14 inch run. So that was from the house out to the end of where my LVL, my header was. And so 312 pitch with a 14 inch or 14 foot run, that gives me 42 inches of rise. Now I used the Pythagorean theorem to get my rafter length. So I took 14 feet, squared it, gives you 196. 42 inches squared it gives you 12.25. I add those two together, gives you 205.25. I take the square root, gives you 14.326. Convert that into a fraction is 14 feet, three inches, three and 29 30 seconds of an inch. Now that's my total run of my rafter to my seat. Then I've got to add on my overhang, which I put a 12 inch overhang but then I've got to subtract an inch and a half, and that inch and a half is because I've got an inch and a half ledger up against the house. So I'm taking away an inch and a half here. My run comes out. I cut my rafter seat, and then I add my overhang from there out, which in this case was 12 inches. So that's how you would take. So I'd take this, subtract this, and then add 12 inches, and that would give me my total length. But here's the one thing that'll bite you. 
you've got a 42 inch rise and so if you come out here and you cut your uh your rafters and you cut it at this formula and so you go ahead and you come over here and you set your ledger board up here and you come up 42 inches to the top and then you cut your rafters well your rafters not going to set on it because you got to calculate the height above your plate because this is the line we're working off of and it'll come up 42 inches but that rafter is going to stick up beyond your header so what we got to do is lay one out and get our height above plate whatever that measurement is we'll add it to our 42 inches and then that'll give us the top of our ledger that way when you cut this to this formula It'll all work out and your rafter seats will set on your headers the way they're supposed to. Now this board's pretty straight, so it doesn't really have a crown in it, but if it was, uh, let's just say crown this way, that would be the top. But what I'll do, I've got a 12 inch framing square, so I will set it down here and this will be my end cut will go against my ledger. Now here's your common rafter scale. So we'll slide that around there too. 312 pitch, and so I can come right here and get my mark. Now that's gonna be the top of the rafter and then we cut this off and that would be the correct angle to go against the house. All right, so I'll come down here. This is my 14 feet, three and 29, 30 seconds. There's my mark. So I'm gonna come to my pivot point. I'm gonna bring it back around to my 312. And that is gonna be the back side, my bird's mouth from a rafter seat. So when I get that mark, now what I gotta do is establish the run of my seat, which in my case was seven and a quarter inches from LVL. And I like to use a framing square for this. So I'll come over here and line up with my back cut. I'm gonna find seven and a quarter for my width of my header. And then when I do that, I'll lock it down and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna make that line. So there will give us our bird's mouth cut out. And we do all that to figure out what our height above plate is. So we're going to come on this line. I'll just put it on 10 inches to make life easy. And so we're going to come out here and stand with that line. We go at 10. You're at 7 and 3 quarters. So what we'd need to do is come over here. Straight level line up 42 inches. Add 7 and 3 quarters. And then that'll give you the top of your plate. Or top of your ledger. And then when you cut it on a 312 pitch, it'll come out here. Your seat will set right on the end of this, seven and a quarter. It'll taper back and you'll have it cut right and everything will work out. But all that to say, don't forget your height above plate and then everything will work out. Now, if you want to go ahead and calculate your overhang, I can just follow this rafter seat cut. I'll line it up at 10 inches, get it level, and I can come out here 12 inches in my case and come back to my framing square. And that gives me my 12 inch overhang. And then what I can do is calculate how much of an actual fascia I want. So if we wanted a two by six, we could come down five and a half inches, make her mark, square it up with our line. Then this would give you your rafter tail over to your seat. This would set in your seat flush with the edge of your header and the top be cut on an angle. You can cut a pile of them and stick them up and you already have a roof when it's over. But do not listen to me about building roofs or building cutting rafters. I'm not your man. I just got lucky and got these all to work. But if you wanna learn how to cut rafters, pull old Tom Silva up, he can teach you how. But anyway, it's simple math, it's not hard. But it takes just a little bit of thinking, but once you get it in your head, get everything oriented, you get one cut, try it. Once it fits, hey, lay it down there, and trace them all, cut your line, and you'll be good to go. Well, next up for me is I've got to build a porch to go around this house. I've still got a few steel headers to put in, which they're here, and then I'll be putting four by six wood rafters, and then we'll put a tongue of groove ceiling on top of it. So if I can get that done, about all these big projects will be behind me. So I've got to yet trim the house out inside and then we can get the painting on it and hopefully we can wrap this thing up before long. But hey, this uh, little porch shed was a pretty big project for one person, but 
it wasn't bad that was actually a pretty fun project but i'm glad it's done and behind me and they'd get some metal put on top of it and we'll be ready to stick some stuff under it but if you watch this one i appreciate it and until next time we'll see you later